Hello everyone, hope you're having the most wonderful day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. In today's video, we're going to discuss some more Black Jacket contestants and reveal how they're doing now. So, sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get right into the content, guys! Suzanne Schlitt Hell's Kitchen contestant Suzanne Schlitt appeared in the sixth season of the show, ranking fifth place. Described to be an extremely confident chef throughout her run in the competition, Schlitt quickly became very obnoxious. Putting her self-righteousness and arrogance on display, saying things like, my food is classical, my food is perfect, I can kick anyone's ass, she brought a ton of conflict into the competition. Like for instance how during deliberations, she would point out her teammates mistakes and blame others for her own shortcomings. Nonetheless, Schlitt was admittedly able to back up her confidence in the kitchen through her strong cooking skills. However, this slowly changed as the competition went on, and her consistency went into a downward spiral, leading to her elimination. Considering all these factors, Schlitt was widely disliked by most, but had an explosive feud with a contestant named Neil Middleton. On the other hand, she was able to get along with Dave Levy, but this was mostly because he was unconditionally kind. Before departing from the competition, she did receive a comment from Ramsey, but a cold one at that. He expressed that Suzanne had a red jacket, she had a blue jacket, she had a black jacket. Now, she has no jacket. Although, she did return for the final dinner service, making no mistakes and leading Dave to victory. Following her time in the competition, Schlitt hasn't done too much but seems to be successful. For a while, she became a sous chef at a luxurious hotel called Vidara in Las Vegas, which has fantastic reviews. Though, she moved on to working as the culinary team support leader at the Milwaukee Art Museum and is still there to this day. Since she hasn't posted on social media in years, we hope that she's at least improved on her arrogance. Jason Ellis Ranking in 5th place, contestant Jason Ellis fought his way to the Black Jackets phase with his rather solid cooking skills. Ellis was very kind-hearted and easy to get along with, which made him a great addition to his team. Coming into Hell's Kitchen with a strong sense of confidence, he seemed to think that no one would be competition to him. Though this quickly fizzled out when he realized how talented the cooks around him were and he started to feel like he was losing his mind. Admittedly, Ellis' first few weeks in the competition were average at best, but he evolved as time went on. Not only did he become more self-assured, but he also improved upon his cooking skills, proving to be a strong link to the blue team. Due to his rise to the top, Ellis was widely considered as the underdog of his season, with many people rooting for him. Although he could be pretty moody at times, having a hot temper, losing his cool, and often resorting to yelling. Thankfully, these outbursts faded away as time went on, and Ellis became a frontrunner of the competition. However, since he was supposedly lacking when it came to being a leader, he was eliminated on the 12th week. Apparently, Ellis believed that he had the tools to be a leader, but wasn't given sufficient time to prove so. Regardless, he did receive a comment from Gordon Ramsay, who had mixed opinions on his skill set. He said that Jason was good enough to make it to the final five, but he didn't instill the confidence I needed to see to be my head chef. Following his loss, the talented chef went back to his previous career as a personal chef for large events. Most notably, he cooked at NFL camps and worked for celebrity clients like Serena Williams and Venus. Now he owns a catering company called The Chef's Lobster and Chocolate Affairs, as well as a food truck called Smoke 631 Barbecue. We're glad he's doing great. He deserves it. Gail Novenario Contestant Abigail Novenario, aka Gail, made it all the way to the Black Jackets portion of the competition, but was eliminated ranking in 5th place. Considered to be a very calm and friendly chef, Novenario was without a doubt one of the strongest links to the red team. Well, in the beginning anyway. Mostly since she swiftly went into a downward spiral and never recovered from it. Being nominated twice over the course of 12 weeks, she was eliminated since the quality of her cooking had declined. Generally speaking, Novenario got along with everyone and developed friendships with contestants like Nona Sively and Melissa Donnie. She did however have a one-sided running feud with Jillian Flathers, who considered her a threat. Additionally, she managed to get along with an insufferable chef named Trev McGrath, which we have to give her props for. Right before Novenario left the competition, she did receive a harsh but true comment from Gordon Ramsay. He explained that Gail's performance in Hell's Kitchen was up and down, up and down, and up and down. Roller coasters are great for amusement parks, not kitchens. Damn. Returning for the final dinner service, she was chosen last for Nona's team, which was very exciting to her since she wanted to crush Russell's chances of winning. Not making any mistakes while on the garnish station, Novenario helped Nona become the 8th winner of Hell's Kitchen. Following her time in the competition, she went on to work at the Royal Society in Washington, D.C. After a while, she was the chef de cuisine at the Constellation Culinary Group, but currently works as a flight attendant. You can find out about how she's doing through her Instagram account, but she hasn't posted since September. We hope she's doing fine through these hard times. Jennifer Norman Appearing in the 9th and 17th season of Hell's Kitchen, Jennifer Norman is a force to be reckoned with. Known as the most combative yet level-headed chef in the show's history, Norman has grown to become a very memorable contestant. During her debut in the ninth season, she was seen as a tough fighter and gradually gained confidence as the competition pushed on. 
Even though her run was pretty rocky at first, she became one of the strongest and most consistent chefs in the competition. Additionally, she avoided backstabbing others or getting into petty drama, but was targeted by Elise, Paul, and Will. For this very reason, Norman didn't take her elimination very graciously since she didn't feel like it was deserved. Admittedly though, her consistency went into the garbage during the Black Jackets phase, so that was the main reason. She ranked in 5th place. Gordon Ramsay did point out though that Norman was finally starting to develop her voice, essentially acknowledging that she had potential. This time around, she got close to Tommy, Elizabeth, and Jamie, but had a bitter rivalry with Elise and clashes with Carrie. Returning for the All-Star season, she had the same personality, but wasn't the strongest in her team. While she performed pretty poorly during the challenges, she shined during the dinner services, doing close to perfect. Losing the Black Jackets challenge though, she was once again eliminated, ranking in 6th place. On the plus side, she did get some praise from Ramsey, who expressed that she improved since her last season. Once again, she had a running feud with Elise Harris, then she was incapable of owning up to her mistakes and always started drama. That aside, she did develop a close relationship with Robin and was the only person to tolerate Josh. Following her first appearance on the show, Norman went on to work as the executive chef at Beacon Grill. Then after the second, she became the executive chef at Sea Level Oyster Bar and still works there to this day. Clemenza Caserta Season 10 contestant Clemenza Caserta managed to make it to the Black Jackets phase thanks to his passion for cooking. Described to be a very goofy and lighthearted man, Caserta was always one to crack jokes and lighten the mood. Considered as one of the funniest contestants in the show's history, he was extremely entertaining to watch. Even though he might have had a very strong start, being one of the most solid chefs in the blue team, this eventually went downhill as time went on. He became very inconsistent due to his weight and clumsiness, which caused a lot of conflict with his team. Most notably, Caserta would often under or overcook things which led him to being nominated 7 times over the course of 14 weeks. During the second half of the season, his performances got so bad to the point that his team no longer trusted in his skills, which is why he was chosen during deliberations so often. Having a long-running feud with Royce Wagner, he didn't like that he was arrogant and, ironically, that he performed inconsistently. Somehow, he was one of the very few people who were able to get along with Robin Aldemavar, who was a terribly rude and disrespectful person. By the 17th episode, Caserta was booted from the competition for not being able to keep up with the other contestants. Following his appearance on the show, he went to work at his family restaurant called Stuzzy in Richmond. Additionally, he works as the co-host on a radio show called Chewing the Fat with Rob Brewmeister and competed in the 8th season of Cutthroat Kitchen. He also appeared in Ramsey's show called 24 Hours to Hell and Back in the second episode of season 3. Sadly, even though this hilarious man was invited to compete in the All-Star season, he decided to decline because his health wasn't doing that great. Well, that will sadly be all for today's video here on the channel guys. I really do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and let us know in the comment section what kind of videos you want to see in the future. Subscribe for more content like this. Turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content when it comes out. I really hope you have a good day guys. See you next time.